Well, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, friends, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I don't know where it is that you are joining on the Live Signatures podcast, but whatever place it is that you're tuning in, you are most welcome. The Live Signatures podcast actually is a daily show where I talk about purpose, productivity, and resilience. And for some seasons, I have also been interviewing people on a Wednesday, taking a sabbatical as far as that is concerned, and uh, maybe that will be back shortly. But we talk about purpose, productivity, and resilience, and uh, everything uh, related to those three pillars, those three pillars of life. I do believe those are one of the biggest pillars that you can have in life, the pillar of purpose, the pillar of productivity, and the pillar of resilience, uh, like a pyramid of sorts. If you are not a man of purpose, then there is no point for being productive or your productivity doesn't matter. But then you're living in a fallen dark world and you need to be resilient. Every time you fall, every time you encounter a setback, you need to rise up once again and just be as resilient as you can be. That's what we deal with. And we are in the middle of a series, and I think I've started winding up this series. I'm talking about collaboration in the purpose economy, how to effectively collaborate in the purpose economy. I've spent quite a bit of time in the past five or so episodes talking about and demystifying the purpose economy. Today, we will see how this goes. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Well, I think it is safe to say that what I've been discussing so far culminates into one thing, that the next biggest revolution that we're going to face as a human race is the Papa's revolution. And I have already talked about this and say that it's not necessarily a revolution. It's like we're going to go back to the beginning. This thing has the beginning in its place. Papa's has a beginning in its place. The phone that you're holding in your hand or the phone through which you're listening to this podcast and the laptop or the gadget, it's beginning, it's purpose. It is purpose. The same applies to you and I. Our beginning is purpose. We didn't exist for the first time as an experiment or for nothing. It's amazing that everything that exists, especially non-living, they have a purpose, specific purpose. The AC, the car, the laptop, the street lights. Everything you see inanimate, you seldom will find something useless. So everything you see has purpose. But we as humans, we start debating that we don't have purpose because we evolved from dust, a belch of dust somewhere. Where did that dust come from in the beginning, at the first place? What I'm saying in, in short is that I do believe, let me just go there. I do believe that there is a divine order in things. And the divine order has a grand purpose. And that grand purpose is subdivided to 
individual purpose. In other words, what you do, what I do, is totally different from each other. It is unique. But they communicate, or they collaborate, or they commune and contribute towards the grand purpose. So you are not useless. I am not useless. You are not here uh, just because someone evolved from Homo sapiens to Homo erectus and, and all that stuff. There is a specific reason. That's why you have purpose, you have a calling, you have some unique abilities that nobody else in your family has. And then, of course, you have some unique passions. I'm not talking about passions for, you know, things to, to come into your life. And I'm talking about a passion to make things happen or a passion to stop things from happening. Some of you, you have passion. You, you, you see in your family, someone talks about something that is happening in the society and they laugh at it. And for you, it pains you. See, you are different. And that is an indication that there is purpose inside of you. So we've been saying all along, and I'm afraid I'm going to go back there. I wanted to start collaboration today. But we've been saying all along that there is a system that we've been living, a system of survival. And it's temp templified. I don't know if that's correct English. It is institutionalized in such a way that we are, for the most part, the same as the wild animals and the birds of the air and the fish of the sea. What is the purpose of all those guys? What do they do? Every time they wake up in the morning, they have to look for food and fend for their kids. And that's it. There is nothing larger for, for them, larger in life for them. The, the weaver bird <laughs> doesn't know anything else other than weave its nest and procreate and sing. That's it. That's survival. The humans is different. It has got to be different. It cannot be the same. We are humans. We are God's creation. It cannot be that the the biggest, the biggest thing that we do in life when we wake up is to look to survive and that's just about it. It cannot be that that's the mode of our lives for seven decades, eight decades, nine decades, and then that's it. I don't want that kind of a life. I don't think that's, that's my portion. I don't think it's your portion. I don't think we... As humans, that should be what we do. But for the most part, we find ourselves that that is what we do. If you analyzed, just got a cross section of your life or my life or somebody else's life, for the most part, it points towards survival. Nothing outside of it. And it's been institutionalized for decades on end you are born and you've got to be fended for you know protected and kept safe the moment you can start walking we are already thinking about how we can institutionalize you into school why because a kid has got to go to school why does a kid have got to go to school mm, I ask that question why do they have to go to school? Well, they have to learn literacy. They have to learn how to write, how to read. That's how the world works. The world works that way. Why is the world working that way? Is that the way the world is supposed to work? At the end of the day. What is the most important? Is it the child or the world? So a child is born... And we totally ignore the child, but we are subservient and bound to how the world operates. We don't take time to discern and to find out and to analyze who is this child? 
What is so special about this child? And when I talk about child, I mean just about every human being. You and I. We are kids. What is so unique about us? We forget our uniqueness. We've forgotten it. We've institutionalized life so much so that we forget our uniqueness. It's only when we are so hyper unique, outlier unique level, as when they take note, Messi Ronaldo level, Einstein level, as when Obama level, that's when the world steps aside and, and gives us a way of sorts. But for the rest of humanity, it is just like the beats, beasts of the, of the, of the what? Of the forest, the birds of the air, and the fishes of the sea, the worms of the land. Survival. And that's how we live. That's how we've lived all our lives, ladies and gentlemen. If you ask anyone the reason for their life today or the reason behind what they are doing today, they will tell you an answer that points to survival for the most part. They will not tell you an answer that goes to purpose. Now, that's the bad news. The good news is that Increasingly, ladies and gentlemen, we are seeing either through revelation <laughs> or through hardship, we are seeing that the world and the way it works is not working. We are seeing that there is a place for purpose. There is a place to start excavating our purpose in life. And there is indeed such a thing as the purpose economy. It is being given different names. Uh, some call it the gig economy, the passion economy. Others could even call it the digital world. People call it a startup world, and I talked about that at length yesterday. Let me tell you this it is the revolution that we need to be focused on. It is the revolution that needs its place. It is something that needs to be in the integral part of humanity. And this is a rallying call to all of us who are listening to this. You share it with one or two people, three or four people. Let's have a discussion about it. Start discussing with your friends about it. Just sit back and analyze our lives for a minute. Do you think survival is all that there is for humans? Excuse the birds of the air and the fish of the sea and the animals of the land. Excuse them. But for the human, there's got to be something different. And that's where our purpose comes in. The purpose economy is coming up, ladies and gentlemen, and we need to be prepared for it. And one of the things that works a lot in the purpose economy, in fact, the bottom line and the strength of the purpose economy, the foundation of the purpose economy, is interconnectivity. Why? Because you are different, I am different. See, the reason as to why I'm saying that the purpose economy has been forgotten is because what we are looking for, for the most part, is survival. And survival is being given one pill of sea of sameness. That's why you force 40 kids with different abilities, different passions, different dispositions, different heart sets, you force them in one class for eight years to learn the same things. It's because we have not identified the purpose economy. And we, for a good reason, have now started seeing that the thing of the sea of sameness is no longer working. It ain't working anymore. 
and therefore we are being forced gradually to start considering the purpose economy i am still fighting and praying that it will be integral integral means that it is fundamental and it's foundational it is not a band aid you know towards the end of someone's life or midlife crisis that's when they start thinking of purpose economy it is integral it's foundational it's from the beginning the consciousness has been changed from the beginning that's what i'm talking about the purpose economy i have failed to exhaust talking about the purpose economy probably there's a book that needs to be written about it aaron hust actually is a man who has written a book called the purpose economy and i have not even uh, tackled any one of the things that is shared in that book but you get my point so maybe we will talk about collaboration at another p- point in time but today just receive that and think about that bye bye thank you for listening to life signatures radio if you enjoyed today's show subscribe to life signatures radio on itunes stitcher or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com life signatures radio fresh clean and inspiring